Did you buy another film camera? Oh. So in 2022, with film prices really high, we are all looking for ways to save money while shooting film. I have a few unexpected suggestions of things that you might not have thought of before that you can do to either raise funds or save money and still be able to buy and shoot film. Number one is stop buying film cameras. <laughs> To a lot of us, film cameras seem like something really necessary that we need to be buying more of. And I totally get it, but I do think that we could cut costs in that area pretty easily. So I have a suggestion of a way that you can not empty your bank account out, still buy film cameras and make other people happy in the process. It's called the one in, one out rule. You buy a new film camera, you got to ship another one out. This will either fully or partially cover the new purchase that you made. It will also make room for your new camera and it'll be putting a camera on the market for another film shooter who could really be in the market for that one or maybe it's their first film camera. It will probably also suppress your guilt for buying yet another film camera. This is something that I try to implement in my own home and I will admit it doesn't always work, but it's a good rule to live by just in general for everything. It helps you get a nice flow of possessions coming in and out of your life instead of hoarding things. <laughs> So for example, we just bought this Fuji Instax for pretty cheap on eBay. This is our first Fuji um, instant camera. I have a few Polaroid cameras, but I've never tried Fuji. I am loving this and I'm so happy because the film is a little bit cheaper. So that fits in with this frugal themed video. But I am thinking that a Polaroid camera has to go either be sold or maybe I'll do a giveaway here on the channel. But yeah. This one is the one I'm gonna be using and there's no point having like all of these instant film cameras when the film is kind of pretty expensive and I think this is the one that I'm gonna go with. I get that we all have cameras that we are never going to part with and a lot of them are actually investments, I think, because they do kind of go up in value. So if you can justify it like that, that's fine. But in my personal opinion, I think it's better to have more money for film and developing costs as that's an ongoing thing. If you've got cameras to shoot with, then why do you need more? Tip number two is reevaluate your film stock choice. So reassessing your film stock purchases and what you normally keep in your film fridge could be a really great way to cut costs. Do you really need to be shooting Portra? Do I really need to be shooting Ektar? I love Ektar so much and very frequently would buy a brick or two of it as it was my kind of go-to like pro stock. But post price increase from Kodak, I am hesitant to drop a hefty $200 on a brick of Ektar film. So instead, maybe I will save up for it or I'll buy a roll here and there when I know that that's the film stock that I really wanna use. But moving forward, I am gonna be looking at what I can do with the cheaper film stocks like Color Plus. Even though they have gone up, they are still gonna be cheaper than your portraits or your Ektars, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe you're somebody who shoots a lot of medium format film and we all know that that is more expensive, you're getting less shots. And I think that if you are using it for something like Instagram or like a digital portfolio, do you really need to be shooting 120? Could you mix in some 35 millimeter and do like half and half? 35 millimeter film is really underrated in what you can actually get out of it and finding a lab that offers really good scans with really high quality, like high res scans might be all you actually need for what you're using them for. So consider taking a look at that and reevaluating both the format that you're shooting and your choice of stock. On the flip side, you could do something like shooting half frame and get 72 images, which is crazy off one roll of film. Uh, I was worried that the quality wouldn't be as good from that negative. Obviously it's not gonna be as good as 35 or 120, but I've seen some scans that look really good, especially if you are using them for digital things like Instagram or a website. I will link a couple of half frame cameras in the description box if you are interested in learning more about them.
tip number three is finding a way to monetize your photography. I think we all have a skill or something awesome that we could share with the community and I'm sure that they would love to give back to us in order to keep us creating for them. This option is really endless and you might find that it leads to more creativity in your photography as you now have this cool new thing that you're offering to people you are tied to releasing something every week or every month and you're getting feedback from them you're getting positive reinforcement and it'll just help you to keep creating with your photography and stay fresh so i have a few things to suggest that you can start off with if you are looking to go down this path print sales are a really obvious one it's kind of where i started as well and i have done really well selling prints online and it feels so good to know that my work is on people's walls all over the world using something like darkroom tech which i I will leave a link to in the description is such an easy way to get started with selling your prints online it's really hands-off you can set the price yourself so you can charge as little or as much as you want so that you can make it really accessible for everybody you could also look at doing something like a local market i've seen people on instagram do that and it looks super fun if there's something in your local area where they have like an artist's market and you have access to printing you could just print a couple of things off and offer them framed or unframed at a local market i think selling your work actually gives it more structure and really enhances it i've been taking my work a lot more seriously since i've been selling on darkroom and i find that i am kind of more intentional when i'm shooting which is really great for creating like themes around my work and helping me to curate my own work. A lot of us in the community make zines or photo books, or you could even do something like an ebook if you don't have the time or the money to be outlaying for it to be printed and shipped to people. Doing things like this gives you a fun project to work on and a way of connecting with the community. It feels so good to see your work printed. I recently saw my first photo in a zine. Thank you, Matt Murray, for um, featuring me in Fantastic. And yeah, it could just be a fun little project for you to do. You don't have to charge a lot, but I would definitely recommend working out how much it costs you to make that and then adding a few dollars onto that to make sure that you're making something in return that you can put back into your photography hobby. Maybe you're like me where you have so much that you want to offer the community, whether that's just your shooting experience, some advice or tips, tutorials, stuff like that. You could start a blog or a podcast and then have something like Patreon around that where people can pay something like a dollar or two dollars a month and you can create a little community on there with like a discord group, stuff like that. If you're a person who has a lot of knowledge in a certain area, like fixing cameras or tips on how to get into film photography, stuff like that, there are courses on Skillshare. So you could have a look at things like that and see if maybe that's something that you could generate and then earn a little bit from and then put that money back into your photography. There are some great examples of that on YouTube here. Sophia Carey and Carl McDougall have awesome online courses and have really scaled up in those spaces. Another great option is something like Ko-Fi, which enables people to just sort of donate to you as they feel. So if you're doing a photo project or anything really online, I see a lot of people with Ko-Fi accounts and People can just drop you a couple of bucks if they love what you're doing. I know I really love to give back to the creators that I consume a lot of content from, and I think that we all have something valuable to add. If you're lacking these out of the box tips, then go ahead and hit the like button. Tip number four is Digicam love. So some of you may have seen my video on Digicams and they are increasing in popularity a lot. And I can totally understand that because they're pocketable, fun, and the photos look really good. So these Digicams are super cheap. You can pick them up on Marketplace or eBay. I think some of them are going up in price a little bit and maybe this video isn't helping, sorry, but there's plenty of them out there and you can get them in thrift stores and stuff like that. Obviously you don't have to buy film for them, so you're saving money on that. And I just pop this in my bag every time I go out, kind of in lieu of a film camera and some shots that I maybe otherwise would take on film, I'm taking on the Digicam and that's saving me money. I think it's also really fun to just change up your tools and not be so serious with film. I had this out the other day and I was just happy snapping away because I know that there's no cost involved and was surprised with the shots that I got. We like to take photos as a family with my son and he moves around a lot. And when we do shoot him on film, we'll definitely get some out of focus kind of dud shots. So using something like the Digicam for family outings is perfect and it's way cheaper. The Digicam, <laughs> the Digicam returns. <laughs> 
There is a super awesome channel here on YouTube called One Month Two Cameras. I will link below if you haven't seen her channel, but she covers all sorts of different digital cameras and like the senses that they have and the looks that that gives off. I'm not gonna go through that in this episode today because I'm not really an authority on that, but I just think pick up any kind of digi cam, like this sort of style that you can find. Um, most of them have a built-in flash too. And I think that those photos can rival possibly, or they look just as good as the Nikon L35 AF flash photos that we've gotten in the past of me and way, way cheaper because that camera is skyrocketing in price. If you want something a little bit more serious than the Digicam, you could go for one of the older style Fujifilm cameras. This one is a Fujifilm X20. It's my partner's. He has traveled all over the world with it, gotten many, many shots. We still use it to this day for like family outings to take photos for thumbnails on YouTube. And it's really awesome. Earlier on, I did tell you to stop buying cameras. So I'm not saying you should rush out and buy like one of the Fujifilm cameras because they do hold their value, which is good, I suppose, if you're reselling. But yeah, they're definitely not as cheap as something like a little Canon Ixus Digicam. So definitely consider that. And I would definitely recommend going down the Digicam route because a lot of us already own like a high-end digital camera, even if we are film shooters. So using something super lo-fi is way more fun. Just generally kind of like bringing down the amount of film that you are shooting is obviously going to save you money. And if you're like me, where you do just pretty much always shoot film, something like these are going to be great just to bring down maybe like a roll a month even that's going to cut down on like development costs and leave some film in your fridge for a time when you really need film. Tip number five is consider exploring your creativity in a new way. So whilst photography is one of my biggest passions, I have lots of other creative kind of interests. I love music and movies and sewing and like all these different things that I don't always get time to do, but it can be really good to kind of change up your hobby and considering film photography is becoming more expensive, it might be a good time for you to pick up something that you used to do that isn't as expensive and you can maybe draw inspiration from that and bring it into your photography. So take me for example, I love cooking and I like that it's also a functional part of my day and it feeds my family. That's great. I love looking through cookbooks. I'll often go to the library and hire them out, just read through the recipes. I love looking at the photos and I just get so much inspiration just generally from food, the way it looks, and then the cooking process itself. Sometimes that gives me a much needed break from film photography and also is gonna give your bank account a little bit of a break if you've got a few different hobbies in the pipeline, not just film photography. It just so happens that this video is sponsored by Skillshare and they happen to be the best place to explore your creativity and find your next interest or obsession. So surprisingly, I probably own more cookbooks than I do photo books. And as I said, I love to cook. It's my way of showing my family how much I love them. I am devouring this course from singer songwriter Khalees on creative cooking simple sources to elevate every meal because I mean who doesn't love a sauce Khalees has this infectious vivacious energy and makes cooking seem fun and approachable this course takes you from Khalees's start in culinary school her cultural background and its connection to food and then gets straight into dressings gravy vinaigrettes and more like in photography, things can get stale and we need an inspiration boost. And the culinary courses on Skillshare offer so much for you to level up, hone a new skill, or just get creative with your cooking. With new courses launched each week, you can find something that speaks to the inner artist in you and enjoy it ad-free and at your own pace. If you haven't tried out Skillshare yet, but you're curious, you can actually get a one month free trial and start your creative journey today. The first 1000 people to use the link in the description or my code Lucy Lumens Analog Adventures will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. I've pinned a comment below as well for you guys. So it's super easy for you to click through that link and start trying Skillshare. So those are my five tips to help you save money whilst still being able to enjoy analog photography. I know that they were a little bit more out of the box than you were expecting, but I wanted to offer something different. There are plenty of videos on practical ways of saving money and shooting film. My friend Hashim of the channel Pushing Film has some great videos on removing the ramjet layer yourself, 
bulk rolling film, which is a great way to save money if you're a black and white shooter or you're shooting motion picture stocks. And YouTube is just a wash for videos on how to start home developing, which can cut down on costs a lot. Things like scanning film at home, all the things that I am not doing, which is why I'm turning to these more unexpected ways of shooting film and ways that I can save money. So check these videos out here if you want some more practical tips.